up guys, uh, Heat King here bringing you some Resident Evil 4 remake news. We are basically just a month away from the game being released. Technically speaking, seven weeks to go because, you know, it comes out in towards the end of March. But yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're so close we can taste it. And of course, that means we're going to be getting a lot of, hopefully, a lot of new news coming out now from now till then uh which is the case here because game informer released uh their article i think uh their magazine the interviews or if you want to the previews if you will uh on the game and there's a lot to read and digest here so we're gonna go right into it um i believe there's a there's a detailed version somewhere just need to find it and read it okay and yeah, and before I start, guys, remember to like and subscribe, please. And yeah, let's uh, let's do this. So, I'll get this close here. Everything, everything is a mess. I guess I'll put this around my neck so it doesn't fall. But yeah, so, uh, let me enlarge that because I cannot read that. So, new cover story for Game Informer. I, I got this from the uh, Game Facts, by the way. Someone made a detailed summary list, so I'm reading all of this. New cover story for Game Informer is RE4, uh, I've summarised the article below. Okay, so Capcom was initially hesitant about remaking RE4 due to its legacy and legendary status, and the pressure was high even when they decided to go and remake it. They make a point several times in the article that they don't want to disappoint fans. After what happened with a uh, RE3 remake, yeah, I imagine Capcom is on that uh, pedestal of, okay, we cannot screw this up because we already did. We already screwed up RE3 and we do not want to go through that again. So it makes a lot of sense that they want to make this game right. I mean, for a lot of people, RE4 is considered the best Resident Evil game. Personally, I don't think it is. I think it's the best Resident Evil game in terms of gameplay. But in terms of, like, pushing the narrative forward and that, I think it's one of the worst ones. Um... So, you know, you're always going to have that two different camps of people. The ones who like it because they like the game, you know, the gameplay and that. And then you got the ones that are like, nah, this isn't Resident Evil because it's not, it's not the same. And then, of course, you got the third camp like me who's like, I, I like Resident Evil 4. I just don't like the story. <laughs> the narrative and the characters suck, in my opinion. Um, and I'm hoping that this, this remake, this reimagining will improve that, hopefully. But uh, we'll see. The game features five control schemes, including one based on the original game. So, okay, that's interesting. I've Usually games only have two or three schemes, right? Uh, that's, a, that's a lot. That's a lot. Um, if they got the original control scheme, I'm probably going to be uh, using that one. So, yeah, just, just so it feels... Or maybe I would use the RE5 one. I think there was a bit of a difference there between some of the buttons and that. But, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'll probably experiment just to see, just to get the hang of which one is the best one. Instead of re-sculpting the experience as it had with RE2... The developer instead aims to largely preserve RE4's core design and features, dialing up the 11 while applying a thick coat of, a thick coat of modernization. Okay, that's very interesting to read this, because um, everyone knows everyone knows that RE2 and RE3 remakes were technically speaking reimaginings. They weren't pure remakes. They weren't remakes the way RE1 remake was, where it was essentially the same game, the exact same game but with some expansions and some uh, uh, changes in terms of the puzzles and maybe some slight story changes, like Richard, for example, surviving and then dying in a different way. And then, of, co of course, you know, the uh, addition of uh, Lisa Trevor to the plot and that. But, you know, that never felt like it was, it, it, you know, it was like a different game. That felt like it was the same game, but expanded. It felt like... It felt like the way you would watch an extended cut of a movie. You know, you've got Lord of the Rings, the theatrical cuts, and then you've got the Lord of the Rings extended cuts, and that's what Resident Evil 1 Remake felt like. Resident Evil 2 and 3 Remakes felt more like uh, what we had with... I'm trying to think of a good example here. Um, you had Total Recall with Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, with the original, and it takes place in Mars and then You've got the aliens or the mutations. And then in the remake... It, it was set all on Earth with robots and that. So that, you know, uh, the core elements of the story were the same, but it was reimagined to fit this sort of more modern, futuristic feel instead of the more sci fi ish alien sort of feel that they had, like the space thing they, theme they had with the original. So, or this camera keeps cutting off. 
as I was saying, I was making comparisons between uh, the remakes and the original games of RE2 and 3. Uh, so yeah, the, the you, you, another example could be like, you know, uh, you had you you, you had like uh, the Justice League Zack Snyder cut, which is which is like the original version envisioned by the director, which is the original RE2, and then you had the more like uh, remake version, which is the Josh Whedon cut. Or I guess you could say the Josh Whedon cut is the original version, and then the Zack Snyder cut is the remake version. Uh, that kind that kind of examples of a different sort of film, you, uh, film or story, if you will, or, or game, if you will, if that makes sense. But yeah, it's interesting that they're saying that they're trying to keep the experience the same with RE4. So what I'm getting from this is that. A lot of the changes will might might end up being small. So uh, uh, this this is coming more across uh, as of as what RE One remake was. So they're actually trying to remake it instead of just reimagining it like they did those two previous games. That's both good and, and that's probably a good thing actually, I guess, for OG fans. But for someone like me that actually wanted a reimagining because I really don't like the plot of RE Four, this is like ooh. Ooh, I, I guess that means the, you know, the Salazar statue is going to be kept in, so, you know. <laughs> the developer's personal points of passion of the game, which they refer to as the reasons for the game's legacy, are the elements of re replayability and flexibility to enjoy the game in different ways. Okay. Uh, all the games are replayable. I guess RE4 would be considered the the one that people would replay the most so yeah that makes sense uh okay this one this one's gonna sting this one stings a lot yeah this one stings a lot um uh, no quick time events in cutscenes devs intentionally avoided this dated mechanic dated mechanic really Resident Evil 4 was the first game I played that introduced quick time events to me okay uh, I hadn't played God of War and all that yet. Resident Evil 4 was the first one that, that, that gave me that. And I love the quick time events. I feel it's one of those things that made that game so worth playing as it was. Uh, just just the Krauser fight in general, like that was that was epic. Um, and I loved failing them and just seeing the various ways that Leon can die in that. Um, so cutting them out is actually really disappointing. I mean, to be honest, I was expecting it. I think I think I think a lot of people expected this to happen. So it, it's not like yeah, it come, it doesn't just come out of nowhere. We we kind of had a feeling they would cut the quick time events out, but uh, it doesn't change the fact that it's depressing. Like it's depressing for me because those are one of the gameplay elements I really enjoyed. So so it makes me wonder like. It, are we gonna are we gonna get the boulder sections then like with Leon running from boulders like are we gonna be are we gonna run are we gonna be running away from boulders the way Jill and Chris had to run away from boulders in the original Ori remake were you just running and you have to get to safety or or what what's it gonna be like or is that gonna be cut completely is that like some of the cuts that are gonna happen like and the crowds of knife fight like what's that gonna be is that gonna be a cut scene or is that gonna be like a first boss fight and you're using the knife just specifically? Like I'm curious how they're gonna do this, how they're gonna implement this, but that's very disappointing because I really liked that fight as well. I, I I liked the initial boss fight with Krauser and you can use the knife and then you get these quick time events and you're swiping and then you're shooting and you're doing the quick like I love that. So it's kind of sad to see that go. The first house has additional rooms, including locked ones that require keys. So, obviously, we've seen from the gameplay footage, uh, the original house has been expanded. So, yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, we, we knew that. We knew that much going in. Here we go. More elements of show-don't-tell world building, such as the villager surviving a broken neck, hinting at the true nature of the game's threats. Okay, yeah, we, we already saw that, like that early sort of, uh, uh, you know, foreshadowing of the plaga, so that's kind of cool. Ganados still have the Plaga's tentacles, which are more of a threat because enemies move more erratically and are harder to hit. To compensate, Leon now has the ability to craft ammo from within the menu, take advantage of more environmental traps, and perform a dodge maneuver like in RE3. So we got the RE3 dodge maneuver back, I guess. Um, you can equip up to eight different weapons in the quick select. Up to eight different weapons in the quick select. What does that mean? Eight different. So what? You can equip four, or can you equip like eight? Literally, like okay, up, uh, up. You get the handgun. Up, up. I get the other gun. Uh, left, left, left. Is that what? Is that what it means? Like, or what? That's a bit weird the way that's worded. But uh, cool. It mean it means we got that feature from RE5 where you can equip, uh, you know, different different weapons depending on, where, on, the, on the slot that you've equipped it to. So that's awesome to see. Uh, the reason for making the laser sight optional is because the developers wanted to modernize the shooting mechanics. Okay, yeah, a lot of people I'm seeing are like, oh, why is the rectangle there? Like, why is the laser sight? Like, the laser sight is in there. 
Uh, but you can you also got the option of the rectangle, so I don't mind that. The uh, knife mechanics have been overhauled. In addition to the parry and knife upgrades seen in earlier previews, Leon now can carry multiple knives. The, de the developers confirm knife-only playthroughs are still doable and some on the dev team have finished such runs. Oh, interesting. So you can do knife runs. I'm assuming... I mean, the fact you can carry multiple knives is nothing new. I mean, we, we've had that since the original uh, RE2 remake. I think RE3's knife was not breakable. Like, that was unlimited. But... Um, in, in RE2 Remake, you could, on depending on, uh, I think, if you got, like, a Pacific rank, you could unlock an unlimited knife, I think. So, I'm, I'm assuming with this game, uh, you can, I think they did say you can upgrade the knife. So, maybe maybe there's a feature where, you, you know, uh, uh, the more you play the game and the more you upgrade the knife, eventually you get to a point where you can upgrade it so it doesn't break anymore and you can do a knife run, maybe. I'm hoping there's no knife run trophy. That would be ridiculous. Uh, stealth is much more viable, especially in the beginning. Leon eventually gets a new bolt launcher that compl complements these new mechanics nicely. So, yeah, stealth was already confirmed again with the gameplay preview. This confirms that as well. Stealth is in the game, and we get a new bolt launcher uh, weapon to use in stealth mode. So that's awesome. Um, that's making me sort of more excited for Ada's separate ways. They still haven't confirmed whether that mode is back or not. But if it is, I'm assuming that's going to be very stealth heavy since Ada uses the crossbow. But uh, yeah, I'm curious to see what this new weapon looks like as well. So that's going to be fun. Uh, I think that's one of my favorite features in stealth games as well. Where you just have the bow and just trying to stealth your way through. Uh, so that, that's cool. That's cool to, to have in there. Uh, additional unique weapon types have been added to the game. So that's cool. We're getting new weapons uh, or addition types maybe maybe upgrade features perhaps so that's cool uh, ganados don't disappear into ooze like before instead fallen ganados may twitch and reanimate as the headless tentacle monsters you can counter a twitching ganado with a knife finisher so uh this reminds me of the chainsaw maniac from re5 where depending on uh, on what higher difficulty level you're playing on you would down him and then he would get back up and start swinging the chainsaw like literally maniacally trying to get to you. So uh, this all reminds me of that except now it's the tentacles coming out. And now it's like oh, okay we're going for round two then. And it's going to be a bit more difficult. But the fact you can kill them while they're down before I guess they mutate. That's kind of cool. That's a cool feature to add in. Uh, destroyed environments remain destroyed upon revisiting the, re re revisiting the area. Yep I thought as much I think. I think that was pretty much confirmed. Uh, cool. Uh, I'm curious. I'm curious how much you can destroy in this game now. Um, Ashley is noted as giving off a less childish and bratty aura in this game. In this, me me mechanically, there are major changes to her gameplay elements. You can no longer put her in trash bins. She's afraid of being left alone, so you have the option to have her follow Leon closely or at a distance. She also has no health bar, and you can't heal her. She can take a few hits, it seems like her health regenerates after encounters, but no more than that, or she's downed. From there, you must rush up to revive her, or it's game over. So, I don't know if this is an improvement or not. Um, I guess, I guess in, a, in a way it is, because you no longer have to worry about uh, giving health items to Ashley, and you don't have to worry about extending her health as well, like in the original game, because uh, it, it was it was this sort of challenge of having to constantly look out for her, and at the same time, like, oh, I've got to give her my health now because I need it, but then she needs it more, and if she gets hit, it's game over. Um, it, it, it is, it is kind of sad that they're getting rid of the uh, trash bins in that way. You can put Ashley and you can hide her in there, so no more hideouts, so that's... That's sad because that means the game's going to be a bit more harder now because at least in the original you could hide her in specific areas if you were lucky to be, for them to be there and you could just go through the area and just mop down all the enemies but now it's like okay I'm going to leave I guess it's going to be like at, at least early parts like in the original where you just sort of leave Ashley behind and you just continue on and you pray that no enemies get, catch her while you're, whilst you're just going around wiping the floor with everyone but uh yeah, um, it sounds like it's going to be easier, but also a challenge at the same time. Because again, no health bar, and I'm just getting hit a few times, and you have to run to a reviver. That's a, that's an improvement. That is a big improvement, um, but also no trash bin, so it is a challenge. So yeah, um, I'm curious if there's going to be any other changes, whether Ashley is going to be able to use a weapon or not going forward. Uh, Ashley's new outfit is due to attention to realism in the cold environment. They also want her to feel more helpful and less annoying so you can use different uh, tag team interactions to access more areas upon revisiting old locations. So, uh, 
yes, that kind of confirms that we're going to be doing some backtracking. As it says, we're going to be revisiting old locations. Well, I guess it's going to be like the original. You know, you get to the door and you can't go because you need like a piggyback. And then when once you get Ashley, you can go past that area. Or like the Magnum room in the castle where, you know, you can't go through the door. Again, you have to get Ashley and then you, she opens the door from the other side and you get the Magnum. Uh, so I imagine it's very similar to that again. Um... Yeah, I'm trying to think less annoying. The fact that they're pretty much uh, uh, mentioning that, like, it, it just goes to show how knowledgeable the Capcom team are about how people felt about the original Ashley. So the fact that they're trying to improve her and make her more realistic and a better character, that's that's a good sign. I'm, I'm hoping this is a case with all the characters that they get improved. There are, there are new enemies, such as a tough, hulking tank like Ganado that wears... The severed head of a bull, among others, that weren't revealed. Okay, just making sure it's recording. Yep. So yeah, we uh, there's a new image. Um, obviously, Game of Forward Power gave us some new images, and one of them includes this new enemy, which is like I'm trying to think. It, it reminds me of the enemies that we had in Revelations 2. The sort of like big hulking dudes with like the signs, like, like the signposts and that, the pipes. Um, and this one, and the hammers, I guess, because I did, I think, I did, I do think they had hammers. And this one is carrying like a big hammer and it's throwing a cow head. So uh, yeah, we got new enemies. That's confirmed. Um, we had new enemies in the other remakes as well, but there, there was also the, the the catch of cutting out some enemies and redesigning some. With this though. At least from what I've heard so far, from what the way Capcom's talked about this game early on, they they are trying to not do cuts. They're trying to keep everything in there. So uh, yeah, I think for the most part we are gonna get all of the returning enemies, but we're getting new ones. So that's that's cool to see. That's cool to see that we're gonna get new threats. Uh, plus it adds more of a challenge to those areas. So that's cool. That's cool. But also, it makes me wonder, like, does that mean we're going to be fighting the Chainsaw Maniac and one of these guys at the same time? Because that sounds, like, very difficult. I, I can imagine on harder difficulties, this is this being, like, a big challenge for players. Uh, there are more side quests. Some are missable. But since you turn them into the merchant, he will let you know if you're going past the point of no return. Side quests include the blue medallions and variation of the graveyard puzzle from the original. So that's cool. That's cool. They've they've implemented this thing from the original from from RE Village essentially, where you had like side missions where you had to look for treasures. Those were basically your side missions, if you will. So that, so those are sort of coming back. Confirmation of the blue medallions. Confirmation of the graveyard puzzle. That's kind of cool to see. It make, it make it make makes me wonder what more they have added in because everything I'm reading now just pretty much tells me that it they are they are modernizing the, the game. They're trying to keep it as faithful as possible while modernizing it, but they're also extending it. They're expanding it. They're adding a bunch of new stuff like this in. So yeah, this is this is all sounding good. It, 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 it's going to make the gameplay experience feel both familiar and new at the same time. So this is good. This is good. You know, this is how you do it, man. This is how you do a remake. Looking at you, Last of Us. Looking at you. What did you give us? Hmm? Besides just a coat of new colors. Hmm? I know some people are gonna get upset about this, but uh, no, it needs to be said. It needs to be said. That was that was a cash grab, a cash grab I bought and I played as well. And yeah, it, it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it um, for that price. No, no. Anyway, continuing on. Puzzles carry the spirit of the original ones, but are not exact replicas. For example, the stained glass puzzle in the church is now different. Okay, so some of the puzzles are going to be redesigned. To be fair, there are not a lot of puzzles in the original RE4. There's the stained glass, there's the there's the graveyard puzzle, and there's the, um, I'm trying to think, there's the button one uh, that you do in the lab, you know, the changing of the color, and that's, that's free. That's free puzzles I can think of in that game as a whole. And yeah, I don't think there were any other puzzles in the game. If there's more puzzles... Oh, and the one where you turn the, the orb before you go into Mendes' room, bedroom. So that's four. That's four puzzles uh, that I can think of from the original RE4. I don't think there were any others. Um, no. No, I, I can't think of any other puzzles in there. And, unless, unless you count the water room as a puzzle where you had to put, uh, you know, uh, Ashley on that side of the room and Leon on the other side and then, and, and then you had to push the lever. I don't know if that counts or not. Like, you have to turn the lever and you have to put piggyback Ashley onto the balcony and she has to run and you have to protect her. Does that count as a puzzle? The sword puzzle, there was a sword puzzle where you had to take the two swords and you had to switch. So I guess that, that counts as a puzzle. The point is, there weren't a lot of it. I'm hoping, I'm hoping they add more puzzles in this. Like... I would, I would loving, I would love nothing more than for the revamped castle to have more puzzle elements. But uh, 
we'll have to wait and see because if there's one thing that disappointed me about Resident Evil 3 Remake is how it got rid of essentially all the puzzles from the original game like and yeah it was it was sad to see they didn't have that in there like they didn't have any modern versions of that so that was disappointing I'm hoping they don't do this here I'm hoping like I said it extends uh, many additional areas have been added some to avoid more tense encounters others with new lore Salazar is pointed out as an example of a character with more lore. Okay, so this is the stuff I want to read. I want more new lore. I want more backstory. I want more expansion of the material. I want more development for the characters. So this is great to hear and read. Like, this is what I wanted. Plus, uh, again, if you take into account what the developers said early on when the game was announced about how this would tie into previous RE games and future RE games, that there was new lore put in to accommodate that. So that's great. Those are great additions, and I'm curious to see what those are going to be. Like, how does this game technically set up RE5? What uh, hints is it going to have to RE7? From what I heard, that, that, that that's in there. But uh, again, we'll have to wait and see. The house defense mission with Lewis is expanded. Leon is more suspicious of him. Lewis will knife down enemies and you can now board up windows with boards like in RE2 in addition to using bookcases. Okay, see, another case of expanding it. The fact that Leon is more suspicious of Lewis, again, adds a bit of a new character dynamic and conflict to it. So it's not just, hey, Lewis, you're my best friend. Oh no, you're dead. Lewis, like, you know, uh, adding that bit of conflict there. Making Leon a bit more nervous. I mean, he should be. Like, he shouldn't be this jokey kind of guy 24-7. There should be a bit of a more caution there. Like, who are you? What are you doing? Like, what is going on? So, I'm, I'm liking I'm liking these elements. I'm liking these details. And I'm hoping, of course, that Lewis will be in the game more. Like, I'm hoping to see more of him. Besides just those, like, what, four or five cutscenes that he's in the game and then he's gone. Like, the Itachi case can be equipped with charms that grant perks like extra ammo. Okay, interesting, like looking forward to that. Some boss battles capture the essence of the original while others have gotten completely overhauled. That's interesting to read. I'm, I'm imagining that a lot of the early boss fights in the village will be the same, but it's the ones going forward in terms of the castle and the island that are going to be vastly different. For example, uh, I, 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 do, I do think, for example, that the Garados, if you will, you know, the big Wolverine blind enemy, I think that will be a boss fight now. Like, instead of just, like, a typical mini-boss fight, I think that entire area will be overhauled, and it's going to become, like, an actual boss fight, so, uh, I'm thinking that's the case, maybe, as well, maybe, maybe we'll get, and the fact they said that we're going to get new enemies as well, maybe we'll get new bosses, maybe, like, maybe instead of fighting an El Giganto, like, like, four, like, three or four times in the game, we only fight once or twice, and then we get something else, maybe, if the Lava Room is still in there, maybe we fight something else in there. Or maybe the Salazar fight is a boss fight now, or, you know, the, the uh, statue, I mean, like, it, it depends. I'm curious to see what has been changed and what has been kept and what has been expanded. Like, it's getting exciting. It's getting exciting. That's... Oh, it's getting exciting. And then, finally, Capcom mentions that the mentions the fate of the dog isn't what it, what it appears. So... That, that uh, early footage we got showing the dead dog, uh, yeah, that's, uh, and now Capcom saying this, probably means that, yeah, the dog is still in the game, the dog will probably still help us, but there might be a twist to it, and in this case, I'm assuming that it's going to transform, like it's going to get infected, and it's going to transform, and it's going to attack you, and it's going to make that encounter a lot more sad and tragic, that's kind of what I'm hoping for, I know it's a bit dark as hell but uh, just imagine you know you find a dog you save it it comes back it helps you fight El Giganto maybe it's a different enemy and it saves your life and you know and then you want to go and pet it you want to go and thank it and then it mutates and suddenly you have to put it down and that's like damn that's depressing so I'm, I'm wondering if that's what's gonna happen here maybe uh, the plot is mainly similar to the original but since it takes place within the continuity of RE2 remake and RE3 remake there will be new twists and elements so the fact that they mentioned this like that it's taking place in the continuity of re2 and re3 remakes pretty much pretty much make confirms at least that this is a new continuity of resident evil so starting with re2 remake and going into re3 remake and now re4 remake this is a new continuity i don't think this version of re4 is going to overtake the original RE4 game. Not the way that RE1 Remake, for example, came out and pretty much like knocked the original game out and it's like, that. that's like the, the main RE1 title 
that you have to play now because you get a lot of story elements from that that continue on like Lisa Trevor coming back in Umbrella Chronicles for example RE0 being sort of connected to it now so you've got those elements there uh, but uh, but like with this it's like no this is this is a continuity of its own and it makes me wonder if that means they're going to continue this continuity like if we're going to get the fact that, it, that the fact that early on they the producer said that it will reference like like things from RE7 uh, makes me think that okay those games are safe like uh, you know th those games will th this continuity will connect to those games specifically so games like i'm assuming that means that in the future games like re7 and 8 will be remade those will remain and especially i think with revelations as well revelations 1 and 2 i think will be the same but it it makes me wonder if that means we are going to get remakes of re1 and Code Veronica and then re5 and maybe 6 to sort of complete this version of the continuity of the series and throw in some hints and references that lead into the future of the series like RE, like hitting at RE 7, 8 and anything going forward. So I'm wondering about that. I'm wondering if that's going to happen because I mean, again, again, what is the next remake going to be? If this game is, is successful and it is going to be successful without a doubt, what's the next remake going to be? Are we going to get an RE 1 remake next? Are we going to get a Code Veronica remake? Are we going to go straight into RE 5? Because I've been saying, I've been saying, you know, if you want to do this right, so yeah, I've been saying if you're if you're going to do this properly, yeah, you gotta go back to the start and give us an RE1 remake set within this continuity. Give us a Cold Veronica remake followed by an RE5 remake, and then you've got your trilogy there, basically, essentially, like your Stars or Chris versus Wesker trilogy, and that's that. That's complete. And then of course RE6. Well, you could. I, I still say you could improve that game a lot, but you know that's for the future. Uh, but yeah, overall, that's all the information there, guys. That's everything there that's been revealed. Uh, very good info. I'm hoping to see gameplay. I'm hoping to see a new trailer. I'm hoping to see some new character designs. And yeah, I can't wait. We're so close. Seven more weeks to go, guys. Seven more weeks to go. Anyway, I hope you like this video. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. And I shall see you when I shall see you.